Hello and welcome to Trigonometry. I'm Francis Foster. I'm Constantine Kishen. And this is a show for you if you're bored with people arguing on the internet over subjects they know nothing about. At Trigonometry, we don't pretend to be the experts, we ask the experts. Our brilliant guest this week is a comedian, podcaster, entrepreneur, and one of the people behind Made in Chelsea. Francis Bull, welcome to Trigonometry. Hello. <laughs> Good to have you here. You, you look suddenly <laughs> like a rabbit in the headlights. I, I, I'm, I'm trying to think what, what I'm an expert in. But. <laughs> well, we're about to find out, yeah, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. Uh, tell us a little bit about who you are, how are you, where you are, what's been your journey through life? Uh, so, what, so my background is, uh, I guess, in entrepreneurship. Uh, I, I, I uh, left Edinburgh, started a business, um, and uh, then went into uh, development with the production company in London to make a show which was focused around young entrepreneurs, aspirational show focused on young entrepreneurs in London. Anyway, um, that turned out to be Made in Chelsea, which was a very different show to what I saw. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, so, I, so I sort of six months in, I realized I was on a um, reality TV show, which was, uh, which was fun and uh, was an a, a, a amazing experience. And uh, I, I left, you know, a couple of times, had a business down in West Africa, doing gold exploration and doing some conservation for um, pangolins, which is a critically endangered uh, animal down in West, well, all he's of them. He's getting the virtue signaling yeah. in right, yeah, right. I, got I, I, I just thought I'd throw that in there. You know. <laughs> I'm he's such gonna, a I'm, good I'm a, guy. I'm a good person. Are you a vegan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you a vegan? I, I'm not a vegan. I did try it for a bit, but then I just felt so weak and like, <laughs> I, and I felt like I'd lost my mojo. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 uh, I didn't feel, um, you know, the, uh, the, the sort of picture of health that everyone said I would when I, when I became a vegan. Yeah. But, you know, I, people want to do that. I think everyone's bodies are different mm. and, and some people don't need, um, creatine and protein. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to eat meat. Yeah. Uh, anyway, um, so you, you did some work out in Africa. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I interrupted you. Keep yeah. going. Yeah, so I, so I had a, um, a mining exploration business out mm. there in, in Ghana. Um, my, I, my background is in mining and, and precious metals, gold, gold trading. And then after that, uh, the sort of price of gold crashed when I was out there. And uh, I came back here and started a cider business called Yoshi Cider, which is a, a, um, a Japan-inspired um, uh, premium cider uh, made with Fuji apples and various Japanese uh, uh, flavor combinations, Sakura Cherry Blossom, um, uh, Lychee, original recipe, which is the original Fuji apple. I've got like eight other flavors, which I'm bringing out mm. over the next kind of couple of years. And you're a comedian on podcast as well. Yes, yeah, well, actually, actually, I did my first gig. You, you were both there at my first gig. Yeah, yeah we yeah, watched yeah. you lose yeah. your virginity. Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. In uh, November, November? Yeah, yeah, last year, yeah, yeah. Which was, uh, which went uh, a lot better than my second gig. <laughs> I am a very good yeah. MC. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, That is always the way, man. Yeah. The first one always goes great, and you're like, yeah, I'm actually a great comedian, and then in the second gig, yeah. you're like, yeah, okay, well, this is going to be a long journey. Because after that, because I've been writing so much for that first gig, and I was, uh, you know, because I wanted it to be, uh, I was so, I wanted it to be funny, and, and um, the first gig went well, then I was like, well, actually, I think I've got, like, 10 minutes of material now. So then I went and did this, this second gig uh, the, like, the next day, actually, at uh, Two North Down. And it was a new material night with an audience of, I think, seven or eight people <laughs> in that <laughs> huge room. Yeah. And uh, um, anyway, that 10 minutes of material uh, turned out to only be a few minutes, and uh, I had to kind of apologize and get off stage. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to comedy, my yeah. friend. Yeah. That is how it went. Yeah. It is a long, hard slog. But uh, in addition to all those things, uh, you're a classical liberal, uh, which is a, a term that people like to use nowadays. Everyone is everyone's simultaneously like a Nazi and classical yeah. liberal. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, those yeah. are the two terms that are now everyone loves to use. Well, uh, I, I think I used to... Um, uh, when I was at university, I, I very much, um, I, I, I mean, I loved Ron Paul, Rand Paul. I very much kind of identified with the sort of more libertarian uh, um, position. But actually, as I've, uh, I, I, you know, I've, I've read a lot more Hayek de Tocqueville, and 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 I just feel like actually um, classical liberalism is is almost. Uh, 
uh, well, I just feel much more resonant with that posi with that position, mm. and and also there's there's almost like a um, a uh, a kind of uh, tarnish on the libertarian moniker, right? I think people kind of have used it in a sort of pejorative way for, mm. for so long. I, I don't know. I think classical liberals sort of clean a clean vehicle, even though it is a, is a uh, an old liberal. Um, it reminds people that there was. A, an actual liberalism before the you know, contemporary um, misappropriation of the term, really. Uh, I think so many people, and actually I think that's important to, to point out, is that so many people go around calling themselves liberal when they're absolutely not liberals, uh, and they're the ones calling everyone fascists when they are actually the, the sort of intolerant fascists, mm. uh, authoritarians in waiting. And um, so I think, it, it, and, and you know, in discourse, words are important. So I think, you know, true liberals, which I believe are the, uh, the classical uh, liberals, need to um, uh, reappropriate that that uh, that word. Uh, so what are the core tenets of classical liberalism? Just because most people have no fucking idea what any of these things mean. Well, I, I, I okay. So so uh, fundamentally, equality. Um, uh, civil liberties and uh, and and the rights of the individual uh, over the collective. I mean, in in a nutshell, I, I think that's pretty much it in in in, in the sort of sort of three key points. And from those points, um, you know, spread out so many other um, facets. You know, freedom of speech, property rights, uh, and 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 the law. You know, and 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 the state's role. As essentially um, enshrining and enforcing uh, the laws which protect those original uh, um, tenets of, of classical liberalism. And what, what do you think the word liberal means now? Because sometimes, like, like we were just touched on earlier, when someone describes themselves as a liberal, I always raise the yeah. eyebrow. Yeah. Metaphorically. Well, that's a problem, right? Yeah. Because yeah. because you know these days people think liberalism is, uh, well, or progressivism, right? People think that um, slowly making everything more free for everyone is somehow uh, liberty, but it's, but it's obviously the, the actual, in, inherently by, by offering loads of free things via the state, you're, 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 uh, you're actually violating other people's uh, liberty, right? By, by expropriating their wealth and, and, and also essentially um, enslaving the unborn to you know huge sums of debt, which actually is how it works out because most public spending is actually um, deficit finance. Mm. Right? So, um, so yes, I, I think there's and even even the sort of progressive uh, term. I mean, it's, it's progressively less free. You know, if you if you you're a proponent of that of, that, of, that, of those ideas, I think you you. We are slowly making society less and less free, and actually, you know, I think that's one of my main um, gripes with the European Union. Why I've I've been a sort of long-standing, even well before the uh, referendum, I was I was very um, uh, in favour of leaving the, the European Union because I think the trajectory of the European Union and the and the structures that they've um, installed there are um, well the the direct opposite of where we want to be going if we want to live in a free society. So let's touch it, let's, let's explore that a little bit more. Yeah. Why do you think that? Is there anything that you'd point to in particular? Well, I guess the uh, the sort of centralization of power in an unelected, unaccountable few is a recipe for a dictatorship. Mm. Uh, and, and, and coupled with a sort of, uh, uh, sort of almost, <laughs> Well, complicity in in an expanding regulatory framework uh, is like a a, a steadily um, growing I, I don't know wave of, of of control over the sort of minute details of everyone's lives, and I just think like that's not a society I want to live in. I believe in fundamentally transferring, devolving as much power, political power, um, uh, to the individual uh, and to local communities. 
to to make decisions for themselves. Do you think, like we're talking about liberalism and how that yeah. term has been redefined now? Do you think it's become essentially a different way of saying left wing? Because, like, I'll give you an example. I was recently added to a list by Chortle, this comedy yeah. review website, of comedians who are pushing back against the liberal consensus. Yeah, right. And they had this whole list, and then uh, a, a guy, a, a very good comedian, Gary Delaney, who watches our show sometimes, and he he read it, and he went. This isn't a list of people pushing back against the liberal consensus. This is a list of people who are liberal pushing yeah. back against authoritarian. Exactly. Yeah. No. Well, that's the thing, and and it's and it's and it, that's why I'm uh, that's what I you know was saying before is that we need to reappropriate and reassociate the word liberal uh, with the true sense of the word, actual old school classical liberalism, um, and uh, because it's it's not. Um, it's not a fair um, uh, state of affairs that, that people who go around thinking that they are liberal uh, you know, are able to use that, that, that term and actually have successfully uh, uh, appropriated it from people who actually are liberal-minded. Liberal and from your brief experience of working in the arts, have you noticed that it's not the most liberal of industries, although it claims to be? Well, that, that, that's, that's definitely... Uh, I mean, I, I, I've been doing stand-up now for well eight months or something and yeah. and um, and uh, done sort of 60 gigs or something and I have definitely um, just noticed from other people's material especially new material nights you just it, it's it's almost like everyone's very consciously trying to toe the party line uh, and and uh, and and you know, I was actually reading a uh, an article where St uh, interviewed Stuart Lee, where he called up another comedian, asking him what he should be saying on this uh, on this particular point, whether it was politically correct. What was the politically correct way it's to always good to check your thinking? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> which, which, I found, which I found that was uh, I was I was like that's extraordinary that one comedian is actually calling up another one just to check that he's towing the party line. <laughs> Uh, and and um, I mean that's surely not what what the role of a comedian mm. is is to what to to protect the establishment. <laughs> like yeah. I mean it's not like it, it, it's it's just a weird. I mean obviously I'm I'm uh, you know very new to it and uh, and um, and I'm I, I I'm not I'm not left wing. I I, I I I consider myself a liberal in my own heart, but but I would say a classical liberal. Uh, Outwardly, good old uh, Nazi. Yeah, 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 yeah. All, all, all that, whatever you, whatever, whatever the the the. the current, that's what the Nazis so. wanted. They yeah. wanted as much freedom for everybody as possible. And have you have you actually outed yourself yourself as a lever yet to the comedians, or is this is this you? Your I think it's very. Outing? I think I think it's very um, easy to uh, to see. Like I, I, it's all over my my Twitter. I mean, I've been, I've debated the stuff on. I debated Nick Clegg on. This week, a while ago, you know, I mean, I've made no secret of it because I think these sorts of things, particularly such monumental decisions, it requires you to speak up. The interesting thing that's happening now is actually that some of those people who are pushing back against this supposedly liberal consensus are starting to get traction because that's what they're doing. Yeah, you know, Jeff, Jeff Norcott, yeah. Leo Kurt, Alistair Williams as well with yeah. his. Brexit. Did you see his Brexit? Yeah, yeah, bit? yeah. Great yeah, bit of yeah, comedy. Yeah, yeah. which actually, is a very funny guy. Which, we, we know him well. Yeah, which, which I kind of, I was just like, this was an open goal for like any comedian to do that, to 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 do that joke, but just no one was doing it. No one was brave enough to actually do it. Right. Well, the thing with Alistair is that he is very skilled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what he was able to do is to, he did it in a comedy club that you you will know top secret. Yeah. Generally attracts a very kind of progressive young yeah, yeah, hip yeah. crowd. Yeah. And he has the skill level to be able to... To dance that. To, yeah. You know. Exactly, walk that line. But if you go on stage in a normal comedy club and just go, yeah, Brexit is fucking great. <laughs> <laughs> the they might laugh. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah they, because they might think you're being... Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, like, I do a bit about my mum being Brexit, yeah, yeah. Brexit here. And then uh, and sometimes at the more progressive clubs, that gets a... Ooh. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean... Might, but it, but it's but it's what Easy kind of mum, though, what, yeah. kind, what kind of free society uh, uh, are we living in where you where people feel like they can't actually voice what they really think for fear of losing their job like mm. losing business losing their friends I mean it's it's not free you know we we need to we need to encourage people to speak up 
and 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 you know use common sense and 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 share their you know rational conclusions on things without fear of just being labeled a racist or a or a or a Nazi or a fascist or you know. Well, you're going to enjoy my Edinburgh. Show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but I also think as well that it's it's not just that element of it, although that is a massive problem. I think as well it's that you know people who want careers, especially comedians who want careers in the mainstream media, they are really loath to come out because mm. it means that they're going against a general consensus, yeah. which as a result means that their opportunities will be limited. Well, exactly, and 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 you know obviously um, that has uh, crossed my mind, uh, but. I think it matters more to me, like that we fix society and and we and we correct these that we course correct into uh, into um, a sort of freer world than than you know my short term uh, financial you know or, or, or career gain. But maybe I, and I was saying this before, like I, I am optimistic. I do think you know people like yourselves going out and 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 having these conversations which need to be had is going to wake people up people will be properly woke <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah well it's like you you've been um, y y you've kind of come out and started talking about i guess the f that's the freedom that comes with having a gold mine uh, <laughs> wow <Well>, god <laughs> i don't have a gold mine this anymore. Is, I'm, I'm kidding man but this is what we should do man when trigonometry becomes a big success guys when you give us loads of money on patreon and subscribe star we're gonna buy a fucking gold mine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're, we're gonna go and out no, to where Ghana is it? Ghana? Yeah. Well, no, I, I, I think. Well, there are lots of there's lots of gold everywhere. Just you know, just, <laughs> there's <laughs> lots of gold, gold everywhere. everywhere. Just, just uh, buy low, so high. That's buy low. Well, that's what that's what we're gonna do, man. Buy a gold mine. Apparently, Look, uh, I'm Jewish. I've got <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've, I've got the natural skills for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trading in yeah, precious yeah. metals. Yeah, exactly, mate. You're like uh, I was gonna make a comparison between the the pig and the truffle that you just hunt it out. But I, I really the, don't the, think the, that is a good. No, that's not that. It comes across as deeply anti-Semitic. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we will just but move on. But you are on. a lifelong Labour Party voter, so. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Not anymore. Fuck <laughs> Corbyn. Um, there we go. Sorry, my Venezuelan side comes out every now and again. <laughs> But but it's a it's it's a really important point yeah. you make. We do have this culture of fear. That's why when I say there is a problem with free speech in this country, people go, "No, it's not. You just want to say, you know, just drop m bombs and all the rest of it without repercussions." Which and is it, true. We, yeah. yeah, of course. I have a racist voice. We all know this. <laughs> However, th there is a real problem with freedom yeah. of speech in this country, in that people are terrified to voice their true opinions. Mm. And and comedians are getting, you know, visits. From the police mm. asking them about jokes they've told, right? I mean, that is that is a frightening reality, right? I mean, like, how is that how how is that going on? Uh, or or people um, for a tweet they've said? I mean, it, it, it's it's there's not even the um, the illusion of free speech now, right? People are just I mean, the, the police are so politicized uh, about this. I mean, we've got knife crime going through the roof, and they're going around. Um, uh, chasing people on, calling people up on on tweets and jokes they've told, or or um, or, or hate crimes, which essentially is just a crime, right? Like, mm -hmm. uh, but they're trying to attach more gravitas to it by what you're thinking, right? Like, mm -hmm. which is the motivation for it, which is which is uh, prosecuting people for their thoughts mm -hmm. indirectly, right? I mean, it, it's it's that is not a a you know free society. We also have this hate incident thing now as yeah. well, which that is the thing that really blows my mind, which is essentially that if you do something and I perceive that you did it. Well, that's what I mean. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and the thing is, like, they can't you know, a normal crime if it's committed. Right. They have to investigate it and they mm. have to establish whether it happened or not. But with hate incidents, because they're not crimes, they don't need to establish what happened at all. So if I say you're immediately guilty. Yeah. yeah. So if I say something happened, it happened. Yeah. And then that goes into recorded statistics. And then we have an epidemic of hate in Britain. It's like, what, what are you talking about? Well, and, and then that that justifies their narrative uh, to say, oh, well, um, Brexit has caused a spike in yes. hate yeah. incidents yeah. and things, which is just nonsense. They're just now I mean, like I, 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 that's the thing. What is a hate incident? It, 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 you can't prove or disprove. Uh, you know what's going on in someone's head yet, you know at least, uh, and uh, I think we should we should be very careful uh, about about this notion of of um, hate, uh, hate speech, hate crimes, all of that, because fundamentally what it boils down to is 
policing people's thoughts and, and uh, b you know, before they're even able to speak, really. Absolutely. I mean, for, for a lot of people, I hate crime. It's every time uh, Constantine goes on Good Morning Britain. Yeah. <laughs> the, the amount of tweets yeah, yeah, and all yeah, the yeah. rest of it. Uh, but no, actually... You were brilliant on, on Good Morning thanks, Britain. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. But actually, that's the thing is, I actually don't feel that that is true in the sense that whenever I have been on it, the pe feedback has always been overwhelmingly positive. Not me. on the Comedy Collective. Oh, yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> the Comedy Collective is a group where all the left I, 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 Yeah, I'm on Comedy Collective. Yeah. But, but what have you tried to put... Are they, are they, have they been bad-mouthing you on the Comedy Collective? I, I have no idea. I don't really oh, pay yeah, that much attention. Really? Is that right? I pay a lot of attention yeah. to it. Really? It's, yeah, it's, uh... But actually, you know that ITV, every time I go in Good Morning Britain, they turn off all the comments. For their videos, really, yeah, be and I think it's not just me. Generally, they turn off the comments because all the stuff that they put out, ordinary people don't agree with it. So whenever yeah. I've been on it, I certainly know by Twitter, like the person that they've had me up against in yeah. the debate, they always get a ton of shit, and I always get a ton of praise. Yeah. Right, but you wouldn't know that by looking at the way that the presenters treat me and the way that they treat the, the other person. Do you think there's a conscious thing of trying to mask that uh, agreement with your position? Yeah. I think so. Because if you look on YouTube, actually, 90% of the Good Morning Britain videos have a horrific like to dislike ratio. Really? They get ratioed into the ground. It's like our Matthew Paris episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We had Matthew Paris on recently yeah. who, who said yeah, that we yeah. must stop Brexit. Uh, and a lot of people took that to be like us approving of his yeah. position yeah, 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 yeah. and ratioed that video into the ground. So that's what happens. And I think that the reason that is, is they don't want to have to deal with the reality that the public don't agree with them. Mm. Yeah, you know? yeah. And they have their own agenda that's driven by a very London-centric, very... Well, they don't elite. even care. Mm. They don't even care. I mean, and, and, and there is this kind of, um, you know, they think that all Brexiteers are like racist bigots, but you know, actually I would say probably most of these sort of radical Remainers actually just don't really like care much for the working class. You know, they, they, they have this sort of disdain for anyone who, who, who maybe doesn't share their worldview and, uh, and, uh, and look, I think I've met a lot of people, uh, you know, Remainers, some of my family also uh, voted Remain and, 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 and I think it's a lot of people who, who have, have kind of, you know, they've done well for themselves, they're on the up, they've got, you know, you know um, a, a house or a mortgage, you know, they read the FT, uh, and, you know, they, they, almost, they almost don't want to, they don't want to um, mess with what they've got. And, you know, they've, 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 they've made plans for a future, you know, in the European Union. They don't want, I mean, the, the FT, predicted that they thought that London house prices could be hit uh, with a 47% crash uh, in the event of a no-deal Brexit. So obviously, that's going to uh, influence the, the uh, thinking of people who own houses in, mm. in, in, in London, which is, I don't think, a coincidence why so many people um, uh, you know, in Parliament and, and, and in the media and people who, who are doing well for themselves have, have, have some London property. Maybe they, that's their their uh, sort of side business is a bit of property development, that they're all, you know, frightened of Brexit, right? Because they, they want to continue what they've been, been doing. But, but I think, and, uh, and actually kind of reminds me of uh, de Tocqueville, right? He's saying, saying you've, got to, you've got to step outside of, of, of what might be uh, in your interest in, in, in the short, you know, in your short-term financial interest and, and 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 do what's right for society and and, and the, the country as a whole. And I just think that we have to put the country first. Well, see, the thing is, like before Brexit, I may not have agreed with with what you're saying, principally because I may not share your economic analysis. Right? Mm. I might think, well, I'm not sure that Brexit will be good for the economy. But now that we are where we are, I struggle to defend an anti. Brexit argument on the simple basis that we had a vote, mm. we made a decision, we have to steer through, irrespective of how I personally feel about yeah. it. Yeah, and actually, what's interesting is, um, from a statistical uh, perspective, in any binary referenda, uh, there will be a large portion of uh, essentially don't knows, right? 
uh, and because there's no don't know option, they will invariably go for the status quo. Mm. So, and I think that works out to like 32% of the- That was of, me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Jamie, that was yeah. me. I was just like, well, well I don't know enough about and, and, it. And, 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 and uh, you know, a third- I'm a good uh, person. Yeah. 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 Almost a third of, 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 of the vote, right? Uh, yeah. Potentially uh, voted for the status quo. But now, if there was a second mm. referendum, the status quo is to leave, right? Mm. So, so whether people would, would uh, would go back on that. I don't know. It's, it's it's kind of an interesting question. You know, what what would be the result? Would you have another a big swing even for for leave because they just want to get it done and mm. you know don't want to prolong the because it would just open up a whole new can of worms. I think that the thing that a lot of Remainers simply don't want to address is the fact that what they're demanding is undemocratic. Yeah, you can't have a referendum and then suddenly go. Oh, we didn't like the result of that. Well, and do you know what? That's kind of quite uh, fascist, isn't it? <laughs> uh, the, 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 You're the real yeah, fascist. Exactly. No. The, but th that's the thing. This, the the um, the sort of casual dismissal of democracy f uh, for your own um, uh, short-term political or financial gain um, is is what ushered in uh, uh, authoritarian dictatorships and uh, you know the the Nazi party and you know people who who are willing to look the other way at, at, at just gross violations of of of, of people's freedom and uh, and 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 civil liberties right so I think that that there's a lot more in common in fact with the environment of of just allowing democracy to be um, uh, um, uh, trampled on uh, than than I guess the, the the people who are actually just trying to to uh, enforce it. And I think the thing, another thing that really, when we're talking about fascism, is you know the the way that certain they've made certain words now, you know, absolutely toxic. Like, oh, he's a lever. You know, this must yeah. mean that you know he's racist. He's right wing. And the idea that Brexit is purely right wing is a nonsense yeah. anyway, because it's. When you look at the the old school left of Labour, they're all pro Brexit. Well, also uh, for 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 their aims, you know what, what they want to achieve, um, they're not going to be able to do that. And because you know, a lot of it uh, for the radical left is about consolidating power in their hands, right? Uh, and and they're not going to be able to do that when all the power has already been consolidated in Brussels in 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 uh, you know another set of pairs of hands. <laughs> well, actually, we had Paul Embry on the show. I don't know yeah. if you caught that episode. No, no, I haven't. No. Uh, he is a trade unionist and a socialist. And he was saying, look, the traditional left wing argument in favor of leaving the European, European Union is it, it takes the shackles off you, your government. And if you have a radical Labour government, you can then. Do yeah, you can actually you, you, know, you, you know. can you can make a lot of uh, socialist yeah. changes. Right? Yeah, and you can have, you know, Venezuela type of yeah. Yeah. economy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, I need to lose weight. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's what you want, mate. Yeah, that's absolutely true. That's yeah, absolutely. And that pretty much is the only way it's going to happen as well. Yeah, yeah, if you is. literally don't have money for food. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that why you're voting for Corbyn? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's why I'm voting for Corbyn. Yeah, to get my cholesterol down. Yeah, yeah, and because he hates me. Yeah, 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 exactly. That's exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every time he pisses me off, I'm like, right, Corbyn. <laughs> Corbyn, yep. Yeah, tick. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, the other thing I was going to ask you as well is you're someone who's obviously lived abroad, traveled a lot. And uh, one of the things I was talking about on Twitter recently that uh, had quite a lot of resonance is the idea that a lot of the people who criticize West, West, the West, yeah. Western civilization are people who've never experienced anything except for Western civilization. Yeah. Yeah. And as someone who has traveled a lot and lived abroad and seen, you know, what people live like in Africa and in other places, uh, how do you feel when people go on about how the West is this evil, oppressive, whatever? Well, I mean, I I think um, you know Western democracy, uh, you know, and f free markets essentially, or free market principles, have um, raised more people out of poverty around the world than any other political force, um, and uh, and and you know you can really. You know, I mean, we're just so lucky, you know, to 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 live where we are, and and, and you know, that's why I really do have a, a sort of optimistic um, um, view of, of 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 the West. I do think that common sense will will win out and win the day, but but uh, but yeah, I think we we are um, very lucky, and I think a lot of people forget that or just have no real idea how how, how lucky we are to to live here. I mean. Um, 
Yeah, well, so, so, talking about you yeah, being yeah, abroad yeah, in yeah, Africa yeah. and well, uh, uh, what, do you have any other kind of specific points about that? Like, what, I mean, well, I, I sense I, I think I, what Constant was probably tr was getting at a little bit is we're a little bit spoiled here, aren't yeah, we? Yeah, yeah. Oh no, I, th I think we are. You know, and 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 we have the luxury of uh, of um, you know, should we wish to go out and uh, and stop traffic and uh, and cause a big. Uh, uh, um, a load of chaos for what we might believe politically. You know, in many other countries, you just can't do that. Yeah, I'd like to see them try yeah, that in exactly. Moscow. <laughs> <laughs> you, just, you just, you just can't do that. And uh, and um, uh, it, it seems that you know, it's it's just never good enough for some people. And uh, and and yeah, I think we've we've got a lot to. We've got a lot to congratulate ourselves on. On you know the 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 strides we've made in in in, in um, uh, women's liberation and uh, and and um, well you know anti-slavery and all of these things. But there's still slavery and uh, and an oppression of women and gays going on in so many other countries around the world, which people just don't like. You know that's what really people should be protesting. They should be standing outside the embassies of. Uh, of of uh, you know Saudi Arabia and, uh, and and well not just Saudi Arabia but <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, but um, but you know there's so many so many um, so many uh, so many more important things to be up in arms about which are going unchallenged. Really. I'm pretty sure there's never been more slavery in the history no, of the world. There, there, are more, there, there are more slaves in 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 the world than there are, ever have been. Mm. Really? Yeah. yeah. I didn't know. That. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it was because yeah. you're a good person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am <laughs> <laughs> one of the best, yeah. mate. <laughs> really, you're yeah. so progressive. Yeah. You have no fucking idea what's going on. Yeah, mate. You don't need to. When you've got this much virtue, yeah, 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 yeah. it just cleanses everything around me. God, yeah. that must be nice. Oh, yeah. it is, mate. Yeah. Yeah. I am like Jesus. Yeah. Anyway, moving <laughs> <laughs>
and um, and so you kind of you know tell them what. You, so it's very like intense and, and it takes up a lot of time. Uh, you know, not just filming, but you know, sharing your thinking with them, uh, and. Um, and uh, so I've experienced, you know, how bad it things could get in yeah. this country. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, but, uh, but yeah, I, I think it's a weird, like, uh, I mean, uh, this isn't how they would sell it, but I, I kind of have obviously thought a lot about, about it. And it, it almost, it, it's quite kind of postmodern in a way because it creates two realities within one reality. And the, well, the reality on camera becomes a reality in and of itself, which everyone who's involved is kind of complicit in. Uh, and doesn't speak about the things which they might all know isn't true mm. because it's kind of like in the interest of of, of, of furthering the uh, the the storyline. Uh, so obviously the production don't like that, but like a lot of people, uh, I I know have kind of um, maybe had uh, relationships of convenience and 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 camera airtime, right? Mm. Like so they so they've kind of but then. You know, you, you, if you're both willfully involved in something like that, then soon it becomes real, and then you're like, well, what is? Uh, mm. you, you may have got together for that reason, but then, you know, you're still together. So, are you, are you actually together? I mean, it's it's a, it's a head fuck. Yeah, it, this is why when Francis and I decided to do the show, yeah. we, we made a clear distinction at the beginning. No, we become we, lovers. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> We would never let our true feelings about each other <laughs> affect our professional relationship. Hey, it's a tricky business. You, know? yeah, you can't. You can't you, but it's funny to the extent to which all TV is massaged. As someone who's done a bit of it, I know, like, when you go on Good Morning Britain, it's not like you just walk into a room and start talking. There's they want quite, the headlines. They there's want... quite a lot of prep. They, yeah. they call you up before. When you're sitting there, they're doing your makeup. There's a, a particular person who's very clearly very skilled psychologically who comes yeah. in and just chats to you as, like, as while it's happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, what they're trying to do is tease you just past the point which you were prepared to go to yeah. so that you say a thing that's a little bit extra. Yeah, because all they care about is getting uh, their show, those clips, in the headlines, right? Yeah. And, they're, you know, they'll keep badgering you to get that point mm. that they want that, that little headline snippet which they can use and get in the Daily Mail and, the, you know. Which I think why, why new media like podcasts, like YouTube, is having such a breakthrough because, as you say, it allows for an authentic conversation. Proper conversation. Yeah. Like, yeah. we haven't sat you down to try and get you to say something that you don't want to say. Mm. Quite the opposite. We want you to say what you actually think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. And string you up that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, exactly. Well, it, was, it was a nice comedy career while it lasted. Yeah. Yeah. Eight months, <laughs> yeah. 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 You've done very well. Yeah. But, um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I, I guess, you know, um, in, in answer to your other question, I don't know how other shows do it, and how you know how um, much of um, uh, sort of their the, the duty of care they fulfil. Um, I think made in Ch in in the early days, I think it was no one really knew what it was going to be, right? And and no one and, and it, no one really knew um, how big these shows were going to get because it was kind of um, at the, well at the same time as as Towie, we were kind of. Sort of the first shows like that, which 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 kind of catapulted all of us into sudden um, um, uh, I don't know well I guess fame or, or whatever um, you know we were we were recognised you know everywhere we went but um, and 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 certainly some people were um, uh, stable enough to deal with that and cer certain other people didn't uh, you know weren't and and I you know saw a lot of people. Um, kind of break down from that, from the, from the, from the show and the sort of whole, whole fallout from it. So uh, that's really interesting. So what, yeah. tell us a little bit about that because I think most ordinary people will always wonder, like, this guy's a millionaire. He's getting a lot. He's famous. He's got you know hot women walking up to him on the street. Blah blah blah. Yeah, my life is great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you'd have to be a billionaire yeah. for that to start happening. There's no <laughs> such thing as an ugly billionaire. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's probably true. Actually, I imagine. Not that uh, you're ugly. <laughs> <laughs> oh right. The, even the producer's laughing. You're fucking fired at top. <laughs> All right, but no, but there, there's but, a. But, 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 yeah, sorry. Let yeah, me just finish yeah. this question. Question, right like what is the the thing that drives people crazy or that makes people go off the rails when that happens well okay so um, I think the nature of these shows um, um, 
presenting themselves and the and the actual end product as reality, um, you know, w them dealing with the cast members, uh, you know, and saying it ha all has to be real. Uh, you, you, it, it leads certain people to almost become caricatures of themselves, and they, and they, and when their lives become so deeply intertwined with what's going on on screen, and uh, and and the sort of um, the chaos and uh, and and drama that comes with that, they kind of lose track of what is real and what isn't, mm -hmm. and who they really are. So they lose self awareness, uh, and and it's quite, it's it's been quite interesting. Um, obviously, a lot of the cast, well, pretty much all of the cast I knew before, uh, you know, from from childhood, right, from from uh, school and stuff like that, and uh, and so it was it was it was interesting to see some people and how how it affected them. You know, it was mm. kind of, I'm not going to obviously n name. Names. Well, you obviously are just off camera. <laughs> it's, it's fine. Yeah, yeah, He's yeah. Spill but, the beans. but yeah, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> but but it, because what now? We have got, especially young people, this obsession of fame for mm. fame's sake. If you ask, you know, if you, I'm a former teacher, you ask these kids what they want to be when they go out, I want to be famous. Well, yeah. what do you want to be famous for? Is it an amazing footballer? Or no, it's famous for, and, and it's, it's, it's amazing because uh, it's sort of fed right into the, the hands of big tech and, you know, wanting to kind of share their entire lives with the algorithm, which is eventually going to kind of know everything about you and it's going to be, be able to make better decisions for you and for your life than you will, right? You know, it's going to be able to say, well, actually, don't go for this girl because you, you know, you're, you know, you're much more compatible with this and it will be you're right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Don't yeah, go exactly. for this girl, yeah, yeah, you're, you're actually, you're actually you're like men. <laughs> and, 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 and it's getting that way. And, and, um, but I do think that, you know, fame is an unnatural phenomenon, right? You know, mm. it, 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 you you would never in nature, right, when we were sort of living our sort of tribal uh, hunter-gatherer um, uh, lives, be able to become hugely famous, right? There was no, there was no vehicle before the printing press or, or, or you know, obviously there were, there's sort of eventually those kinds of um, uh, kings and, 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 and royalty and stuff like that, but... Uh, but it, it, it's an unnatural thing, and so I think psychologically we don't really know how to deal with it, mm. and it's and it's almost it excites people and, and and the idea of it. I think definitely it's it's uh, it goes hand in hand this sort of desire for fame, and and the sort of uh, treating famous people like they are almost kinds of uh, you know demigods, right? Like people people treat them like they're they're bigger and more important than just. The average guy on the on the street, and and uh, and uh, yeah, I guess it's it, I guess it's um, I don't know where I'm going with that, but well, Paul, Paul was going to say part of the the problem for me that I have with with reality TV, and I and I don't think a lot of people understand this when they're getting into it, is essentially it's a true life soap opera. Mm. So they take aspects of your character, they sort of mishmash it together, yeah. and then they create this character of it, which is part of you, but doesn't in no way represents no. all of you. But that's ev what everybody, the general public, thinks that you are. Well, that's the thing, and and uh, I think a lot of people would assume uh, because I, I I was on that show and because of how they presented me, um, really, uh, you know, to some extent without my, you know, uh, uh, permission, mm. as like some spoiled rich kid, um, you know, that's had everything handed to him on a plate. And and that couldn't be you know further from the truth. I mean I'm 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 a self-made man. I've never had any you know money given to me by, by my dad. Just you know, a small you know. loan of one million <laughs> dollars. I wish. God. <laughs> uh, not even that. <laughs> uh, uh, and uh, so yeah, so so it, it it's kind of like you can't you you can't control that. You can't control how they edit you. You can't control how they present you. You've just got to do your best to give a, a good uh, uh, and fair representation of who you are um, in opportunities like this and 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 outside of um, of that very limited uh, window into a fake reality almost. All right. Well, oh, there's one question that I wanted to uh, ask, and it I didn't goes say fake back, reality. Yeah, it goes back to the left wing thing that like we talked about before. In light of the fact that two people have committed suicide, yeah. who've, who've gone on, um, uh, what's it, Love Island, 
Um, is, and it, then, is that right? Yeah, two, pe yeah, two, two contestants. People. Two former contestants have committed suicide. I can One. think of some people I want to go on there now. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm never going to go on Love yeah. Island, mate. <laughs> not you, not you. Um, I would not go that far with that band. I love you really, Francis. We're going to kiss after this. <laughs> We're really fucking not. All right, okay. Um, and also as well, um, we, recently somebody committed suicide because of Jeremy Cole. Hmm. How much responsibility do these production companies have to the people that go on, especially well, regarding so, so, yeah. Yeah, so, so actually, I think they do have more um, responsibility than they, um, uh, than they realize, or maybe they do. Uh, look, for them, it's um, about making a good TV show, right? That's their, their, that's their main priority. And often that comes at the expense of people's mental well-being. And, and there's a sort of uh, an awareness of that. In, in, in producers, like they know that it's, you know, they know, and, and you know, they, they'll pay sort of lip service to the, their, um, uh, their obligations. They'll get a, you know, psychologist to interview you or whatever. But I mean, it's not a, like rigorous psychoanalysis. And a lot of people have things which they just don't share with the uh, psychologist. Like a lot of people who go on these sh shows, I think are actually, um, you know, they might pretend to have uh, loads of money, but they may be like, in quite a lot of debt or they're, they're desperate and they think that going on Love Island is going to suddenly solve all their problems. Um, but almost like the nature of something like Love Island, um, you know, the way that they have a, this whole new boatload of um, fresh faces in every year, it's almost like designed to make the country forget about the last group of people. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, so they've got like a year to just make it, right? And, and if they don't, and if they don't f feel like it's going as well as they expected it to, there must be a huge sense of like, like, well, pressure and, uh, and depression. And, and, you know, I can completely see how you can spiral out of that. People who aren't necessarily uh, uh, stable enough to deal with the inevitable uh, uh, decline in work that comes with doing those, those shows, people, people are expecting to just be the next, I don't know, <laughs> a good example. Yeah, but, but I know what you mean. It's almost like you have to be mentally unstable to want to go yeah, on that show, yeah, and yeah. then it's a show that's really bad for people who are mentally yeah, unstable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, we've got to wrap up. So on that happy note, uh, we always ask one more question, which is, what's the one thing that no one is talking about that we should be talking about? Everyone should be talking about classical liberalism. As we've done for an hour. Yeah, All right, yeah, there, yeah, we yeah, there we go. Fantastic. What a way to end it. Well, uh, or at least they should look into yeah. to, to it. And um, and a very good book I could recommend people read is The Fatal Conceit by Frederick Hayek. Fantastic. Excellent stuff. Well, uh, just remind us the name of your business again. Uh, Yoshi Cider. Yoshi Cider. Get the cider. And I can say uh, I don't drink, but if I was going to have a relapse, I would certainly pick oh, wow. <laughs> You're not alone there. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, just in case this goes out during or before Edinburgh, do you want to plug? Yeah, so I've got a, a two-week run at the Pleasance Ace Dome from 11 p.m. to 12 p.m. So uh, be there. Book tickets on my Instagram uh, from the 9th to the 25th, and uh, but, but not the 13th. Your Twitter is? Uh, f my Twitter is Francis Bull. We'll Spool. put it in the video. Thank you very much for tuning in, as always. Uh, follow us at TriggerPod on all the social media. Uh, give us an iTunes review. Remember to subscribe to the channel. Click the bell button to get the notifications. And we will see you in a week from now with another great episode. See you later, guys. Take care. Now here's the form that you were asked to. <laughs> it said, by signing this contract, this is the UNICEF on campus at SOAS, right? He was asked to sign an agreement that his routine would not contain racism, sexism, classism, ageism, ableism, homophobia, biphobia, transphobia, xenophobia, Islamophobia, anti-religion, anti-atheism. I think you're doing some quite complicated mental arithmetic to offset the fact that people didn't think you were funny. Uh, I think the reality well, is... The, the, when these students saw me performing a top secret comedy club. Well. You have absolutely no sense of humour, do you? I feel like you're just... I mean, you're just sort of being a bit of an alt-right.
you know, oh, oh, whatever. Right. That, that, we got there in the end. You did, you did, you did well, call that, me that, Nazi. I, Very I, good. I, I, the good thing about being called a Nazi comedian, right, is I now have got a niche. <laughs> Problem is, I haven't got any racist, sexist, homophobic jokes. I don't do the thing a student at university where you can't make any joke about anything in case these poor little woke students get upset or triggered. Get over yourselves! It's not about comedy, it's about ordinary people up and down the country and here in Britain yes. and in America feeling like they can't say what they think. I really don't, like, I get it, I get it, especially, especially the women who want to become men. I get it. Do you remember when Gareth Bale, right, went from Tottenham to Real Madrid? The guy left a perfectly good club for more money. Everybody feels like we're we're all kind of under arrest. We're all all everything we say can and will be used against us in the court of public opinion, and they're coming for the comedians first because we're we're the ones that, as you say, are allowed to transgress. But everybody else feels it, and that's why the story's got the resonance that it has.